This is our last lesson in a very special series of lectures. Uh, this is lesson number five, uh, dealing with hypnotism. We could have gone much deeper and further in this, but these will, will, will give you time to study the Word of God and to realize that hypnotism is not a plaything, and it is not just for you to have some fun with, and it's not for doctors uh, to, to seek to, uh, to, to do medicine upon you, uh, and, uh, and you're in a state of hypnotism where you do not know, do not feel the pain. And, and anything of that nature that can have that po much power over your body, it's not of God, and it's not natural, it's not human, so it must be demonic. And so we do not accept it whatsoever. Uh, today, today's lesson is very significant in that we deal with the church and hypnotism. Uh, when the church was in power, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, universal, uh, in power, uh, the, the, uh, when it had something to say and when it had God's strength behind it, there was very little hypnotism in Christian lands. When I was a boy, in this country. There was very little hypnotism in this country. Uh, it was banned in some Christian countries, and it was banished for others, and the, the, the clergy taught uh, that it was a tool of the devil. The early Christians uh, uh, condemned hypnosis. They, they, they had it in Greece, they had it in Rome, it was not new, you see. They believed that the subjects came under the power of evil and not under the power of good when they were hypnotized. But today, our church Really, we have to be honest about it. It has lost, it has lost its authority, you know. It cannot speak today and cause multitudes to follow it. <laughs> it's lost its authority, and in doing so, it does not have the power today to cause people to live right. And so all I can do today is suggest, but my suggestions are, are, are strong. Hypnotism rides through our land unchallenged, you know, like a dark horseman, a deceiving people, in every walk of our, our common lives here in the United States. You buy the average magazine on the newsstand today, and you will find a dozen places to write to for lessons on how to become a hypnotist. God save us. And that is true. You're losing and wasting your money. Ordinary people are being urged to, to meddle with a delicate balance of people's minds with their friends and with their families, all in the name of fun. Uh, Christians, you had better be very careful because have nothing to do with this kind of thing because it can put you in the devil's clutches and you can't get out. The church ought to speak out on hypnotism. I hope they will after this. It, it, it ought to have an opinion rather than floating through life with no opinions. Uh, we don't need the opinions of churches. We actually need the opinions of God spoken through the church. Not what preachers think, but what God says and they, they, they repeat what God says. What the world needs to hear from the church is not a committee report, uh, but a message from heaven, thus saith the Lord God Almighty, from our pastors. We need the oracles of God and not the offscouring of modern man's intellect. We need the voice of God to be heard as it was in the early church. In Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 10, you can open your book there if you like. In Deuteronomy chapter 18, God says, there shall not be found among you anyone who maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. This, this, this heathen practice was a, a ritual that came out of paganism uh, to demonstrate superiority over, over fire and to prove that they were immune to flames, that there are still uh, uh, fake uh, walkers in fire in India and in Malaysia in Indonesia, in Africa, and other countries of the world. They put themselves into a trance, probably by auto-hypnosis, and become oblivious to pain in a very strange way. Not, 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 not sweet and holy, but demonic. Uh, God forbid that any of his people would ever be a part of anything like this, or to tolerate it. Uh, there, in, in verse 10 of Deuteronomy, uh, it says, or that useth divination. Now, divination is forth foretelling the future but other than human means. That's what divination is. A diviner is one who can tell things that are, that are going to happen by power other than human reasoning, you see, and, and not of God. Not of God, otherwise he'd be a prophet. And among the, the heathen people, extensively, it is becoming widespread in Christian lands like England, 
France, Germany, Scandinavia, the United States of America, and many other lands. Even Christian people today are being tempted uh, to delve into the unlawful uh, seeking after knowledge of the future through the crystal balls, uh, palm reading, horoscopes, reading of cards, fortune telling, what we call ESP, extrasensory perception. These are the rib ticklers among people, and they're turning to, to for assistance and assurance or comfort uh, in order not to have God. You see, that God will not be part of it. God says that you must not do this. You do not seek out fortune tellers, the Bible says, for spiritual material or any other kind of advice. Uh, that is a good way to cause a curse to come upon your life. I've had people tell me that they, they began to play with Ouija boards just for a thrill or just to unlock a few secrets. And to their sorrow, they discovered that their harmless Ouija board had gotten hold of them. Now, this has happened locally. I mean, I'm not talking about something far off. Got a hold of them, and they could not turn it loose. As it had drawn by some unseen power and force, and again and again, they were pulled back to another session with a spooky board, and they had become spiritual slaves to the Ouija. Now, you know, neighbors, God never expected that. You're not to be bound by any demonic forces. You are to be free by the mighty power of God. You can go to gypsies and fortune tellers seeking guidance until you become so entangled with it that you will be, will be scared to make a decision without first consulting these spirit people. Uh, you will be drawn like a pawn by a familiar spirit. I urge you not to be part, not to be part of a thing, of a thing like that nature. God says in that Deuteronomy chapter 18, we were reading in verse 10, or an observer of the times, you see, the observer of times are those who watch the stars and they're trying to tell you what's going to happen by, by astrology. Now, th that is no way to find your future. Astrology, just like hypnosis, is wrong. It does not originate in, in God. It goes right back to the Greeks and the Romans. Just, just like this does, you see. And, and there they looked at the stars and they said, this was my God Jupiter and this is my God here and over there. And, and they were worshiping demons and not the God of heaven. And so God does not want you to become attached to that type of thing. In the same scripture, God says, or an enchanter. Now they were not to have these people even in the kingdom. They were not to even live in the land of Israel. For this is one who practices the secret arts where they can charm serpents, uh, they can cast spells over other people. Now, th now these are the kind who, who stick pins and dolls uh, to bring on pain and a person uh, to become enchanted. What difference is there between that kind of enchanter and a hypnotic operator, you see? What's the difference? When, 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 who, who casts a spell over his, to his subject and, and you, you say, well, you, 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 would you call hypnotism the casting of a spell? I would reply, what else would you want to call it? Is there something else that you'd like to call it? And verse 10, uh, in that same chapter of Deuteronomy, uh, it finishes by going into a verse 11. It says, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer, you see? And, and so here we find all the different aspects of spiritism, and, and they're all in there together. And if you involve yourself in those things, then you have the curse of God upon your life. I just urge you, in the name of the Lord, withdraw from those things. Read your Bible, pray, go to a good church full of the Holy Spirit, and full of joy, with singing and clapping of hands. I don't know where anybody got the idea that religion is supposed to be dull. It's not dull in the Bible. It was great rejoicing in the Bible. On the day of Pentecost, when the church was born, there was great rejoicing in that body. And God wants you to have the same thing. If you read, read verse, verse 12, we have read verse uh, 10 and 11. And verse 12, it says, For all these, all these, all that do these things are an abomination unto Jehovah. If you, if you have to do with all of these things that we're talking about here and that we have read to you and observe of the times and, and all these things, then, and studying the stars, then, then, you know, whether you're a wizard or a consultor or a charmer or a wizard, he says, all that do these things are an abomination to the Lord thy God. They are an abomination. An abomination is that which God wants to spit out. Uh, it's, it's obnoxious to him. And he says, he drove these people out of the land because of this. In case anyone is still in doubt about God's opinion, 
may I quote you from the New Testament? As you say, oh, well, that was in the Old Testament. And, and, uh, and Paul's writing to the church in Ephesus in chapter 5 and verse 6. It says, let no man deceive you with vain words. That's empty stuff, you see. For because of these things that cometh, that cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Because of these things. Uh, be ye not therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. See how clear it is for you to stay away from those things completely. But now ye are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, approving what is acceptable unto Jehovah. And, and have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness. See, that's what we've been teaching about the unfruitful works of darkness. But reprove them, for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. And you better believe it. You better believe it. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by light. For whosoever doth make manifest is light. You see, that's what these lessons are all about, to make these things manifest. We hope to save a million new people away from this thing, that you'll help me to help others to get acquainted with this thing, and that let us set them free. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepeth, and rise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee, he shall give thee light, because God does want to set you free. We have been dealing with hypnotism in many aspects. The last one that I'd like to bring your attention in, in this special series of lessons is related to the end of times. Uh, to the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hypnotism has clearly uh, a, a prophetic relationship to the end of the world. Now, I accept that. In fact, to understand the present phenomenal surge of hypnotism, multiplied millions today playing with it, it must be studied dispensationally or in, in relationship to the return of the Lord. In Matthew 24, the Lord Jesus specifically said to his disciples, let no one deceive you. In fact, that was the first sign that no one deceive you. This was his first response to the question asked about his coming to this earth again and of the end of the world. The number one is that we should not be deceived. Christians should not be deceived. Hypnosis is a condition of deception. It has to be. It could not be anything else. It's a, it is a condition of deception. Hypnotism has no divine life and that can make a man a better person or a cleaner person or a happier person. It does not have those qualities at all. It does not. It, it, it can have some very dreary uh, situations following it. All it can do is open the soul of a man and make it a door to unclean powers and to be invaded by demonic forces. That's what it can do. And that's the reason it's so dangerous. And that's the reason we pray with you. Don't be, don't be manipulated by such a spirit. In the Bible, God firmly established his attitude toward this spiritual phenomenon in, in 1 Chronicles 10 and 13, uh, which says, So Paul, or, so Saul, that's the first king of Israel, he died for his transgression, which he committed against Jehovah. He died because of that. Even against the word of Jehovah, which he kept not. And also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit. He moved into the unknown and was asking the devil what God's people should do. You see, <laughs> and, and God overruled that thing and sent his prophet to rebuke him. And he says to inquire of it. And he did inquire of it, but he did not inquire of Jehovah. He didn't ask God at all. He was away from God. So Israel's first king was rejected and he died of his own hand, committed suicide, to be eternally lost for the simple reason that he took counsel from a familiar spirit. It, it, was a, it was a grave offense against God. Our minds are sacred to God. God made them for us. And we must not open our, our minds up to any other power except God's power. Now, in 1 in, in Timothy at 4 and 1 are some of the greatest works in the Bible. If you have a Bible with you, open it up there to 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. And it says, Now the Spirit Notice that's with a capital S. The Spirit speaketh expressly. Now, now, now the Holy Ghost is speaking, and speaking expressly. Now, that means with, with great emphasis, you see. The Spirit speaketh expressly. That in the latter times, now that's today, that's these days in which we live, the latter times, some shall, some shall depart from the faith, and they shall give heed to seducing spirits. And that spirit that you find in hypnotism and other means of 
meddling with the minds of human beings and doctrines of devils. Now, every intelligent person realizes that we are nearing the end of something. <laughs> every intelligent person in the world knows that we are about to have a cataclysmic situation on the planet Earth and that all things are going to be different. It will not go on like it's going on now. And we find this in the political world, the, the business world, the social world, and now we find it in, in, this, in, this, in this world of spiritualized situations where we want to move from the normal to the abnormal, uh, where we want to move into the uh, ordinary, into the extraordinary. Don't do that because God alone can give you those blessings, and He will. He give you extraordinary blessings, lift you up high in God, and you will not be a depressed person. At this time, the thinking men of our generation sent something in the atmosphere which existed in Babylon the night the empire was dissolved. And, and the finger of God wrote Belshazzar's uh, doom upon the wall, your weight in the balances, and you're found wanting. That's what God said. Our, our modern world ought to feel the rumblings and the foundations of civilization cracking up around us. The same that was felt in Rome when 40% of the nation's income, the, 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 the GNT, uh, was, was squandered on public orgies of blood in the circus arenas. Now, now, now when the circus takes up almost half of the total uh, national product of a nation, brother, you're in bad shape. And if you were to know that billions of dollars in America that's spent on amusement today, you'd see we're getting in the same shape Rome was in her last days. So as the hungry flames broke out to consume the haughty world capital, it was the longest capital city in the history, the Roman capital in, in, in Rome. Rome crumbled and fell through her own licentiousness, her own sins. She fell by the weight of her own iniquities. It ought to shock us to realize that our generation is spending its multi-millions and billions of dollars seeking thrills and soothsayers and fortune tellers and crystal gazers and clairvoyants and hypnotists and, and mediums. In our, in our social life, we're spending millions of dollars for such trash as Ouija boards and tarot cards and anything that can promise to tell us the future. Uh, you know, in, in, the, in the upper echelons of our society, uh, we have prognosticators like, like Jeannie Dixon in Washington, D.C., uh, that, uh, that mingles with great ease among politicians and, and ad administration uh, leaders of our time with her lying vanities. They are not truths. America is on the brink, I believe, of a great disaster uh, into which the nations of Israel one time fell when King Saul consulted a witch for advice. And we're consulting a lot of negative things in our country. When man refuses to hear or obey the voice of God, inevitably he is forced to seek some other voice. And America today is not hearing the voice of God. It's hearing many strange voices that will lead us nowhere. And we better believe it. The other voice can only be the voice of the devil. In the book of Revelation, in chapter 13, the Word of God says that the Antichrist will, will suffer a deadly wound and be miraculously healed when he comes to rule over the world, a one-man rule over the world. Then he will show himself to be a wonder in the world, and his religious leader, known as a false prophet, will cause a statue to speak, and people will bow down to that statue. And, and, and he will even... Uh, he, he will even cause fire to come down from heaven in the sight of men. Now, these are the things that are before us. We're, we're just, the world is being led toward a supernatural aspect. They've deserted God because God is holy and God is pure. And they'd have to move into purity and holiness if they're going to move into God, you see. And so they, 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 have, to, they have to move into demonic forces. Uh, this will be the greatest battle of all time. The devil will be seeking every means and his power to conquer the human mind. That's what he's seeking to do today. The human soul and even the human spirit. He wants to conquer it. And the last great battle on earth is to be a battle for your mind and for your soul. And we're nearing that time. Your mind must not be clouded with fears, with phobias of any kind. It must be, it must not be ever confused by conflicting ideas. It must not be yielded up to strange psychic powers deceiving you and confusing you. All costs, whatever they might be, your mind must, must stay free. 
it must not be destroyed because it is the seat of your will, the will that, that covers you and causes you to make the right decisions. The place where you must make all the proper decisions about how you should live and where you're going to spend eternity. That is so important. It is very remarkable to me uh, that what the hypnotist seeks to do is just what the devil has always wanted to do. It's nothing new, 6,000 years old. The devil wishes to, to possess the mind of a person, to control his mind and his will. And that's what hypnosis is all about. That is why he attempted to do all that he could in the Garden of Eden, and he won. The terrible crime wave that is engulfing our whole world that we live in today is certainly the result of devilish influences and in hearts and minds of people telling them the wrong thing. You're going to be happy if you kill. You're going to get back by with it if you steal. And our jails and prisons are loaded with people today who found out the devil was a liar. Many times when examining some awful, awful deed that has been done, people tell me, a spirit told me to do it. I've had many people to tell me that. Oh yeah, but a spirit told me to do it. They have believed a lie of the devil and have been deceived, and they have done these terrible, terrible things. I'd like to prophesy to you, if you don't mind, and that is that in the last days, which are ahead of us, before the Lord Jesus Christ returns, that millions will have turned to every kind of spiritism, demonology, of all kinds, and hypnotism, and that they will try to escape the frightening reality of life without God through these means of seeking to know something without knowing God. You must be on your guard. Some doctor will seek to hypnotize you or your child. Some educator will try to bring you under the hypnosis to teach you something. I hate to think what will happen to you and what you will learn. In our business world, you will have to guard against the subtle influences of salesmen who have been psychoanalyzed into motivating you by color by color schemes, by little trigger words, and every device imaginable in order to induce you to purchase that which you do not need, which you do not need. It's a, a no sales resistance type of hypnosis that they would like to put you into. You may be offered a religion that soothes your conscience, but doesn't save your soul. That smooths the rugged path of sin, it does not. And, and, uh, and it will lead you to sweet forgetfulness which it cannot, and into eternal reincarnation, which it will not and cannot, and, and, and say to you that the blood of Jesus Christ you do not need. You do need the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ to accept eternal life. May I urge you, as, as I have never before urged you, please never consult astrologers or about your future or offer your mind to anyone who wishes to hypnotize you. Never attend a meeting of oriental cults who are always dealing with the mind, which are a demon inspired. Keep yourself clean and pure before God uh, to walk in his ways and to serve him. I feel this warning along with the warning of others that, that may be almost too late in our country today and in our world today. I feel that. And so my purpose and talking to you now, uh, to, to, to help you now, is to say that, that hypnotism is an unfruitful work of darkness, and don't be, don't be followed up with it. If you have already been in it, Jesus can set you free from it, and you will never be bothered with it again. The key to your victory is in, is in, uh, in Genesis 1 and 26, where God says, I will give you dominion, dominion, and, and God can give you dominion in your spirit and in your life. And you do not have to be hurt by demon power. And so today can actually be the greatest day of your life. Now, Lord, I pray for every friend and friends of my friend right now and those that have been involved in occult worship and of, of hypnotism, of giving their mind over to someone else. Now, Lord, I, 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 I break the power that binds them I set them free from the memory of it, that they will not go back in memory to even remember it, but they will open and say, my spirit is free by the power of a resurrected Lord and Savior whose name is Jesus Christ. Today is your day of freedom. Now is your time to be set free. And I urge you, 
right now to receive all that God wants you to have in Jesus' name. Now, Lord Jesus, I put into your hands these many, many friends. Please, right now, bring, bring joy to their lives and, and bring elevation to their lives. There are secrets in God that are beautiful, that are lovely, and a knowledge of the future in God. And so right now, bless these, my friends, in Jesus' name. I want you to be blessed. I want you to be helped in the name of the Lord. It's been a great delight to bring you these very special studies on hypnotism. If you want all five of them, of the lessons, you can receive them on a very special uh, tape, and we'd be glad for you to, to, to have these in Jesus' name. And, and we have a book that you can carry into, in your pocket, hypnotism. Is it divine or is it demonic? It's, it would be very necessary for you to have this book and for you to know how to be free from, from demon forces. So we would like for you, in Jesus' name, to, to say, I'd like to have it. Also, the audio tape that you've heard today, you can secure the audio tape. We'd be delighted for you to have that also. And you can also secure a videotape on one half inch to fit just your machine so you can write about this also. We'd be delighted for you to have that. Get all the information you can. Fight against evil. Speak against evil. Hate evil and stand up for truth and righteousness and gladness and happiness and eternal life in the Lord Jesus Christ.